So another film that we have pulled out for you tonight is I'll talk about it if you want, Bill, first. Because you just talked about that. The Breakfast Club. Oh, we'll get yeah, the you just did a review of it. Yeah, plug for our super review review of a super review of the uh, Breakfast Club. <laughs> um, this movie, Bugs, and, and less about mental health. It's more about just teenagers getting along. I mentioned this in the review, and I'm glad we brought it up. Um, we, I'm glad we brought it up tonight and also did a review of it as well. I think I, I, think I mentioned this, actually. This movie talks about uh, it shows these five. Basically, if you've never seen the Breakfast Club, first things first, watch it. It's fantastic. Go, see it. Go. classic John Hughes, classic don't everything. Don't you forget about it. Uh, <laughs> don't you forget about this movie, guys. Um, but for real, this movie is great because on several reasons. Number one, and I, I'll get to the third big reason in a second. The first reason is because it showed how five complete strangers can get along. And that's something that not just that was so much less about like teenagers and drugs and mental health. That was that was a lot more about like humanity, how like or just people getting along, how we need to be inclusive together. It's it's just the truth. Um, Honestly, though, like Judd, uh, you know, I fear they said in the trailer um, because I'm trying to because, you know, me, I watch a lot of trailers. Uh, a punk, a, a jockey, a goth, uh, not a goth, but you know what I mean, a beauty queen and a nerd all get along and they all become the breakfast club. And this, look at that shot. That's a great shot right there of the whole cast. Honestly, ing- incredible. The casting of all five characters are spot on. I could not see like Sean Austin do this back in the day. I could not see like, um, you know what I mean? I just... There's so much. There's so there's so much here that's to be said. Not and honestly, yeah, yeah. In the movie, were they smoking pot? Yeah. Were they? Were they? Um, I'm trying to think. I'm drawing a blank. Were they? You know, were, did they all get along in the end? Though, yeah. And there was some anxiety. There was some stress here and there. You know, whatnot. But at the same time, these five characters who had completely different backgrounds. All got along in the end, and it was great. Um, and of course, the very iconic—I mentioned this in the ending of the video I made for the review of it. Uh, the ending of it with uh, the Judd Nelson character holding his fist up in the air. Is, Don't you forget about me? Is being played classic '80s moment right there. That is a classic um, '80s moment. But and one thing I, I touched on this, in the, and I want to go more in depth with it right now. This film should be remade. Here's why I say that the Breakfast Club should have a remake today. Not not for the reasons of, oh, why are you going to remake The Breakfast Club? What is wrong with you? Blah, blah, blah. Shut up. No film is irreplaceable. You're fine. All right. Relax. So The Breakfast Club can have a remake because you can drag. It's a perfect film to drag other elements of teenagers today in high school with social media, with anxiety with stress uh, and other topics like that, you can drag them into a Breakfast Club remake or a film just as like the, just like the Breakfast Club, but a brand new writer and everything too. But if you, re- if you re- remake it, the Breakfast Club, and you do that spin on it, and you might have people's attention. Uh, plus, this is a movie a lot of people have seen. Uh, a lot of people have seen the Breakfast Club either in one at one point in their life or another. And if you haven't, like I said, get on it. But I think it's due for a remake for the reasons of, look, this movie came out in 1985. And you know what? You, may, you let Fall Out Boy does a song for it or whatever and call it a day. And you could remake it with different things. That you, could do, you could do more drugs. You could do social media. You could do anxiety, stress, mental health. Again, we're not trying to stress that point at all here. But well, like I said, this tonight's episode is about bringing awareness to mental health and bringing awareness with movies that talk about it. We're not trying to degrade people or anything like that or call it a the wrong thing whatsoever. It's not. We're trying our best tonight to be as crystal clear with you as we can about how it is important to be aware of it and films that we think can bring it up in a good manner. No, oh, absolutely. So I hope that was well sped. There's good 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 poetry coming out of my mouth. 
Yeah, but huh. I think a Breakfast Club remake would actually be interesting because you deal it with today's problems. Yeah, and you you could do the same like kind of like casting, like a, a, a punk guy, a jock guy, a beauty prom queen girl, a nerd, and a nobody. Put that all together today, and you could have different elements in it. I don't. Bill, what do you think about that? Does that sound good to you? I think that would be really good because I think- you know it's I'm. As much as I like The Breakfast Club, I will admit it is a little dated. Yeah. I mean, some of the, some moments are a little dated. Like, imagine cell phones, social media. That could be another factor. Because, you know, that's a thing that, you know, that's a thing that, you know, with social media, how would that go? I mean, let's say, let's say you have the Ali Sheedy character who was the nobody who didn't really talk to anyone who was dressed in black. You know, let's say she's the one who has the uh, uh, like. If they were to remake it, like that character could deal with things like um, social media. Like she could talk. That character could be like the the quiet one who's off social media. You know what I mean? Like it, there's a, there's so many different elements there you could really use. Let me ask you: um, Who do you think would be the new Breakfast Club, like cast wise? Oh my God! Wow. That's actually an extremely difficult question because the so key. It's like, the, it's like, you, it's like you literally just asked me how, how are you going to remake Back to the Future? The casting is the key part. Um, um, honestly, I don't know who you could. I mean, uh, who would you cast? You, you know what? <laughs> I want to be completely honest with you. Go with total unknowns. Hmm. And then have them break out in this film in a remake of it. Have those actors break out and become stars. If you need, uh, you need one big name in there. So I'd say like, I like Timothy uh, uh, Chalamet. You hmm. know who he is? Yeah, I know uh, who he is. I think he would play a really good like, either a Judd Nelson character or the, uh, either a Judd Nelson type character or the Jaw. Cool. Bless you. Thank you. you know, I'm not sure which one he would do. I don't think I could see him as a nerd. I can see him as a jock or like a some like punk guy. To be honest, I, I like Charlemagne a lot. He's good for like a Molly Ringwald type of character. You could have uh, anyone from like Karen. Is Karen Jillian too, from Guys of the Galaxy? She's too old for that, or no? She could probably rock that, right? Name? Karen Jillian. Gillian, or she's from Doctor Who as well. Uh, how how do you spell her name? I'll look her up. Karen Gillian. She was in Guys of the Galaxy. You know who I think would make a good like goth girl? Yeah, who who do you got? Anya Taylor Joy. I have to look that up. I, who is it? Anya Taylor Joy. Oh, she okay. Karen Gillian is thirty three. Okay, that's not that. You could do that totally. You know what? This that'd be this choice would be a great goth character. That'd be good. She, I I could just see it just by the look on her face. Yeah, Anya Taylor Joy. I think she would be good. Yeah, but like Bender and. Claire, like these, these are. I think a Breakfast Club is due for a remake, and if they were to do it, this could be, this could be it. I think, and you bring in other things like social media. You bring in, like, not, not, not like we'll get to it, but not like so. Thirteen Reasons Why, but like, you can get into like this drama and stuff like that, and see, you know, it, it, it's a film that you could really do a lot with, to be honest with you. So, like the um, like bring up the, or like you know, bring because I. You, when you first said this movie was due for a remake, I was like, first going, how are you going to remake The Breakfast Club? But after what you've been saying, yeah, like, you know, put like modern, put some like modern day problems in there. Yeah, you just put like contemporary social teen anxiety, stress, uh, social class in high school. You know, there's other things you could do with it. So in my opinion, this, what? Or maybe make one of the, um, characters like lgbtq there's that's another one you could do that totally because you know like back then there was sort of a stigma of course like back then those were the days that you kept it hush hush you couldn't like when freddie mercury found when everyone found out he was actually like gay and and you know what i mean like that was a big thing back then because no one like really you know what i mean yeah well absolutely like you know I mean, I, I, I always go back to him as the example, but it's just the truth. Like nowadays, 
Well, I think it could work nowadays because now we live in a society that's more accepting of it. And, you know, like maybe, you know, give one character maybe who comes from an extremely conservative family and this person is gay, bisexual, transgender or lesbian. That could be a whole thing right there. Yeah. And, you know, how they're struggling with their sexuality. And, you know, because, it, you know, people who are people who do struggle to come out, that's a big mental health thing. Right. I mean, yeah, that does totals on their mental health. Those who are struggling to come out. Yeah, it's it's very difficult to I mean, I mean, I don't want to get into the whole thing about it, but like the whole LGBTQ plus community. That's, um, what I that's for Pride Month. <laughs> there we go. Right. We'll do it. And if you are gay, bisexual, lesbian, whatever or whatever, please Please watch next week. No, we, we have no idea. We'll see. We'll, we'll um, figure it out because we do have something in store, but we don't know when we're going to do it yet. Yeah, we'll figure that out. Well, that's a topic for another time. Um, any other comments for the Breakfast Club? My guy? Do you think it's, it's overall you think it's worth a remake, though? I think it might be worth a remake. Like I said, I think it's good, but it is a little dated. Yeah. I mean, it's not like you're remaking Ferris Bueller's Day Off, which is another John Hughes movie. You know, like you're not doing that, you know. Oh, uh, that should not be remade. But I think, but you know what? Like, here's the problem. Like I said, Nat, but if we made it for today's society, like 20, 30 years from now, they might look at the remake and say, okay, this is dated. Yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't see why not. I mean, but yeah, I would say, you know, if you set it and give them like modern day problems, yeah. I think it could work. I definitely think so. Bottom line, guys, what do you guys think? Do you think the Breakfast Club deserves a remake? Do you think it deserves more love? Do you think it should be left alone? What do you guys think about it? Jump down in the comment section below and share your thoughts.